Before the introduction of what we call the Manet Ball, you had infantrymen with smoothbore muskets, then you had specialist troops using rifles that were very slow to load. This changed for the British in 1851 with the adoption of a Manet rifle. By the 1840s, it was becoming very apparent that the age of the smoothbore musket was over. And the idea is to arm all the soldiers with a rifled percussion cap shoulder arm. As we get into the 1840s, what becomes clear is that there are a number of guys who are really developing shockingly innovative solutions to some of the inherent problems of the small arms at the time. These guys, in particular, you have uh, uh, Louis Etienne Touvenin, you have uh, Henri Gustave Delvin, you have uh, Charles Etienne Minet, and these are Frenchmen who, all in their own way, through their own experience, have really worked to perfect the concept of the rifle musket. They've worked to perfect the ammunition that is required for the efficient practical use of the rifle musket in combat. And these advancements are not lost on the British military establishment in the 1840s. Indeed, as these developments like the Minier ball, or as we know it here, the mini ball, as they are developed in France, the British military officers, the British military establishment are taking these designs and putting them through their own trials. One of the big things about military rifles was the problem that they were slow to load. So, for a good number of years, 20, 30 years before the 51 was actually developed, they were trying all sorts of different methods where they could load a subcaliber bullet and make it expand. The French came up with some interesting ideas and the British did as well. Ultimately, they came up with a hollow-based bullet, subcaliber, uh, that would expand into rifling. I'm not gonna go into all the details because it gets very complicated and, and we don't have enough time to deal with it here. But this was, the perfected bullet of this style was used in the 1851 mini rifle. Uh, again, with, a, with an expanding cup in the base. Uh, to load the gun, you had a paper cartridge. The bullet was in the cartridge, inverted. You tore the back of the cartridge off with your teeth or your fingers. Because it was percussion, you just uh, tore the cartridge off, poured it down the barrel, put a cap on it, and fired it. The British pattern 1851 mini rifle is not even arguably, it is unquestionably the most important military rifle, not ever, but darn close to it. Uh, it was the first military rifle that was issued in large numbers to troops that allowed them all to be riflemen. In other words, rather than worrying about firing a smoothbore musket where you can maybe, if you were lucky, you know, hit somebody at 50 or 75 yards, all of a sudden you became a rifleman that could actually achieve good, good hits at 300, 400, 500, and sometimes even a thousand yards. It was a superb gun. The 1851 Mini Rifle was a technological marvel of its time, but it wasn't a perfect design. And in fact, in its earliest iterations, a lot of the problems that it faced had to do with the ammunition. Uh, Wellington himself, before his death in 1852, he insisted that it be a large bore gun. Of course, he, he defeated Napoleon with the 75 caliber Brown Bess, and he'd be damned if the British military was gonna be equipped with anything small bore. And so the compromise they came up with was a 70 caliber bore. This was an imperfect solution because uh, the musket balls and in fact the conoidal projectiles designed for the mini rifle were just a little too snug in the bore. And the other problem that they faced early on was there were no straight sides to the bullet itself. And so soldiers would often load rounds lopsided. So they had to do some refinements in the first years of the 1850s in order to perfect the system. But by the time Britain entered the Crimean War in 1854, a lot of these issues had been addressed. And 
uh, you had uh, a small, a slightly smaller bullet, about a 69 caliber projectile. You had a redesigned profile of the projectile itself. And these guns for large caliber military arms, they were shockingly capable. So a smooth bore three times a minute, rifle one time a minute. What happens if you get the accuracy of a rifle, but you can load it three times a minute? And that's essentially what the British did with the Pattern 1851. When you go and look at the Minet rifle, the, the Pattern 51, it's got vestiges of other generations. It's, uh, it's, it's stock, is it, there's no barrel bands. A lot of guys have been using barrel bands. I'm not sure why the British decided they didn't need them, uh, but it uses you know thimbles and pins to hold the barrel together uh, to the stock. Uh, so it's, it, it looks a little bit like a brown bass in that regard. Uh, but of course, it is a cap lock. It takes percussion caps, um, and you know, proved to be fairly accurate. And you know, it was it was sort of the granddaddy uh, of the British military rifle musket. I mean, it was the progenitor. This is the gun that set things in motion uh, that led to the Pattern 1853.